the G6 homework. But if I look at 14 and I go, oh, that is 4, and I have A, and a little further back when I multiply that, I have A to what power? As we are looking. So we had A times A to the fifth, right? Yeah. So A to the fifth and A, I'm going to write that right away as A to the sixth. Why? I can find the square root of an even power. If you didn't do this, write it down now. So I've taken care of all my A powers here, and I have 12. Oh, I want to factor 12 instead of multiplying it times 4. What are my factors of 12? Perfect if I can. 4 and 3. So now I have these two 4s underneath the square root. Could I multiply and get square root 16? Yes. Why? The square root of 4 times 4 is 4. The square root of a to the 6, that means you're taking a and taking 6, dividing it by 2. That's a to the 3rd when we look at that, right? 6 divided by 2. And I am left with the only thing under my square root, which is 3, 4a to the 3rd, as I am looking at that. So I look at number 17, and I start number 17 with 3 fourths as I'm doing 17. So in 17, 3 fourths, and I go 12. Oh, I'm going to factor 12. How am I going to factor 12? 3 times 4. If you like to put your perfect squares, put your perfect squares first. And then I have t to the third and t to the third. That's going to give me t to the, using my exponent rules, t to what power? 6. Six. Well, now I have 20. How am I going to factor 20? 4 times 5. Times 5. So I look at this, and as I'm doing the problem, and as I see my factors, so the cube root of t to the 6 is going to be half of t to the 6. That's going to be a t to the third. That's out in front of my square root at this point. I had three fourths. I have a four and I have another four. I can find the square root of four times four. That's 16, which would just be four. I had that times three fourths. That's how the fours cancel here. And I am left with three t to the cubed, and I have three and I have a five under here. I'm not going to leave it as three times five. I'm going to multiply those and get 15 because I can't factor a perfect square out of that as I am looking at it square root before you start trying to multiply. So that is going to be one half. You have y to the first and you have y to the third in your denominator. Exponents rules say when we divide we should be subtract. subtract. This is going to give me in the denominator y to the second. Now I had someone say, you know Mrs. Thompson, what if I didn't divide it by 18 and I divided them both by 9? If I divide by 9 then I get what? 4 and 2. Why would I want 4 in the denominator instead of 2? It's a perfect square, and I can find that, right? And we can never have a square root in our denominator. So if I go with the square root of 1 half, then I have to multiply both the numerator and denominator by square root 2. If I can keep this as a 4, I'm going to have in my numerator the square root of 2. In my denominator, the square root of 4 is 2, and then I have a y. Do you need a pencil? Do you have one? As you're writing these? You do? Okay, so make sure you're putting these down. Okay? So that as we are taking a look. So this is my answer, and it's way easier than now doing this one and multiplying both numerator and denominator by square root 2. When I look at 24, Oh, 16 and 4, those are perfect squares, right? What's the square root of 16? 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. I have the b squared and b to the 4th. The square root of b to the 2nd, I'm dividing the power by 2. That leaves me with just, or a to the 2nd, was it? That leaves me with just a, and in my denominator, b to the 2nd. What is 4 divided by 2? 2a over b to the second. Could you divide and had a 4 here originally and taken the square root of 4 and got 2a? Yes, so you can simplify underneath it. That goes for the same with this one. If I look at 26, 12 divided by 15. What number goes into 12 and 15? 3. 3. That leaves me with 4 over 5. Dividing them both by 3. You don't have to show that factoring and dividing that out. 3 over 3 is the same as 1. Well, now I have the square root of 2 over the square root of 5, or square root of, square root 
5 in the denominator and simply 2 to the square root of 4. I cannot have a square root in my denominator. So I multiply it by square root 5 because I can't have that. So to get 2 square root 5 over 5. So if you didn't have these done, you should have them done after us going through them. As we take a look at 30 then, I want to start and I'm going to rewrite this and think of the problem as 8 divided by 30 and m to the second. I can divide these both by what? 8 and 30. 2. That's going to leave me with the square root of 4 and 15m to the second. The square root of 4 is 2. I'm going to have an m that comes out, because the square root of m squared, and I have the square root of 15. I cannot have a square root in my denominator, and since the square root is 15, I am going to multiply both numerator and denominator by square root 15. When I do that, my final solution for 30 is going to be 2 square root 15 divided by 15m. Why? Because when you have two things under the square root, it equals to just that number, square root 15. So today in class, if you didn't finish these, or if you haven't finished going back in your homework, you're going to be looking at that. See the perfect square, how you did this. I don't need you to draw the line. You can put the answer down below. What I need is your work. So the perfect square that goes into 8 is... Four, four, I'm going to see 4, four times two, 2, then I'm going to see 2 square root 2. Go over to this 5 square root 18. What's a perfect square that goes into 18? 9. nine. nine. I'm going to say 5 times the square root of 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is? 3. three so 5 times 3 gives me 15 square root 2. Now, some of you are going to find that there's enough room for you to write, and some of you are not. So when I go down to 125, this letter E, right? The square root of 125, what's a perfect square that goes in? 25. 25. 25, and if you think about a dollar and a quarter, you get 25 times how many? Five. five. That's how we get 5 square root 5. So since I know 5 square root 5 is 14, down below 14 is going to be an E. Right? 2 square root 2, oh, I might cross that off. 2 square root 2 is 12. That means 12 had to be an L. Okay? Why is it 11? Because 2 square root 2 was here, and that was what letter L. If you want to write the number in front, do that, but we need you to do the joke. Why? Because if it doesn't make sense and it doesn't make a word, even if you kind of think of where the lines divide the words, then you did something wrong. And I need you to figure that out before you go on. So, if we are looking and you look at 2 times the square root of 1,000, 1,000, what's a perfect square? Go with 100. 10 isn't a perfect square. So go 100. That's what we want. 100 times... 10 gives us 1,000. Oh, the square root of 100 is 10. So that is going to give me 20 square root 10, right? Now, if you are stuck on these, you will notice, oh my gosh, there's a perfect square. There's a, some of these could be perfect squares, right? But if they're not, that's why the answer is, so when we get 12 for an answer, negative 88, there's possibilities of having the perfect square, okay? Please turn the worksheet over right now. This is where you are looking at the variables, okay? So when you look at the variables, again, if you need that list, I don't know, write it down on the side if you need that. Right now, we want to take a look at the first one, the square root of 9. What is the square root of 9? 3. The square root of x squared? x. x. 3x. So I'm going to go to 3x. I'm going to find 3x and I'm put the letter T. So I'm looking at what do I... Do elephants know how to get? We'll soon find out. So I look at this next one, 12x squared, right? What's the perfect square that goes into 12? Four. I don't want to go with 6 and 2. I want to go perfect. Go perfect squares if you can. So we have 4 times 2 times x squared. The square root of 4. 3. 3. Thank you. So square root of 4 is going to be 2x 
the square root of 3. I'm going to find that answer, and I'm going to put h. So the second bottom half, okay, the second, second. So when you look at the bottom half, again, same thing. When I look at this letter a, when I have odd and even powers, the square root of a to the fifth, I need to write that as an even power times a power to 1. Because it has to be divisible by 2. So a to the fifth is going to be a to the fourth times a, and then b to the eighth. The square root of b to the eighth is b to the half, the power, b to the fourth. The square root of a to the fourth is going to be a to the second. Sorry, a to the second b to the fourth, and then this square root a. a to the second, b to the fourth, square root a. Okay? So the key thing is as you do the problem, so I need this page done before tomorrow. We're probably going to have candidates in, right? Today in class, I'm going to be checking some work. This one, on that next page that I gave you, um, I just want you to be aware that the fact of this quiz, the back of this one, this isn't from tomorrow's lesson, okay? So we're going to do this tomorrow when we look at that. Do not touch that page. But if you are done with the first two pages and you've got all your homework done, your textbook, and you've shown your work, because there's some of you that are totally caught up, like in this page, right? Am I going to... Are either of these perfect squares? No. no. So the answer is square root 15. But when I get down here to A, and I have 5 times 10, I might factor this to be 5. And what do I know the factors of 10 are? I don't have to go perfect factor. I just have to factor 5 and 2. So I'm going to go with 5 and 2. 5 times 2, right? So this was the 5 out here. This is the factors of 10 is 5 times 2. When I have two of the same numbers underneath there, I can pull that out. That's the square root. So 5 times 5 is 25. This is going to be 5 square root 2. If it helps you and you want to multiply and put 50 and then break it down as 25 times 2, you can do that. But when you take a look at this problem, like letter D, and you have square root of 6x times 2x, I can multiply and get 12x squared, right? But why not leave it as, what are my factors of 6? 2 times 3, and then x, and then I have another 2x. If you have two of the same thing under the square root, you can pull that number out of it because square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root 4. That is equal to 2. You have two x's. So my answer for letter D is 2x and square root of 3. Because I can find the square root when I have two of the same thing underneath it. x to the first, 2 to the first, square root of 3. And I find that answer. Now, again, I am not that worried if you get to this page for tomorrow.